Okay, <clears throat> so what's up? Uh, welcome to Solita Core from my part. Uh, my name is Juho, and uh, I work as a software architect for Solita. And I usually do like, you know, cloud stuff and web applications, integration and, and stuff like that. But I'm here to, here to tell you about my sort of hobbyist projects that I have been working on. And I'm going to talk about the most hyped thing in IT industry at the moment. So you all know machine learning and artificial intelligence are the hypiest word around now. But my idea is that I try to endure you to try things out because I have been pretty, I don't know, successful. But I, uh, I managed to get something working. So I have a tradition of spending like a couple of days uh, during my summer vacation to try to learn something completely new. I have studied like 3D programming and Haskell and stuff like that. But this year I was into sort of, okay, deep learning, neural networks. Let's see what's, what's the fuss is all about. So I made a simple game. Video works, yeah, cool. And on the video, you can see a simple game that you just have to sort of go around through the obstacles. I made it with three, uh, three, uh, three JS, yeah, the three day D library in JavaScript. And the interesting thing about the video, oh, it made a mistake, sorry about that, uh, is that. <coughs> Uh, there's a neural network playing the game by just by visual state of the game. So the neural network doesn't see anything like, it doesn't do like ray tracing or anything like that, but instead we just take loads of screenshots from the game and ask the neural network what the player should do and press keys accordingly. And I mean, I got it working. Like, it, can, it clearly works. It tries to avoid the obstacles. And yeah, mission accomplished. But then, of course, I wanted to ramp things up a bit. So, oops, sorry about that. So now it's live demo time. Fasten your seatbelt. Uh, let's pray the demo guards, and we'll see what happens. So, I have. Um, Driving simulator, if you wish, it's called We Drift, something I just downloaded from the internet. And of course, you can see the game, but on the right side, there is these two screens that says left and accelerate. From there, you can see what the neural network is thinking, if you want to call it that. And on the bottom is like toggle speed control and toggle turning. And I can use those to sort of set the turning and velocity control off. And when, it's, when these are white, it is sending input to the game. And when these are black, uh, it's just idling. And this is because I have some issues with velocity control. So I have possibility to sort of toggle speed control out and try to get it to run more slowly. And I guarantee this will go horribly wrong. But I'm, I also guarantee that we make a couple of pretty good, good turns, I think. So, uh, DJ, can you drop me some good music? Because, of course, we need music. Nice song. Okay, there it goes. Actually, 
works better than I expected. Because, I mean, that's like perfect. Nice. We're done. Uh, I'm a bit amazed actually because I have never seen it working that good. And sort of you can, all, of course, you can see that it looks like drunken driver with you know, blah, 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 going around, but it sort of stayed in the lanes and it usually takes way too much acceleration and you know just goes over the uh, steep turns and stuff like that. But now it worked like, like a charm. Cool. Uh, I didn't expect this, so I'm a bit baffled still. But anyway, let's get back to the presentation. Because uh, the thing is that machine learning is quite complex thing, in a sense that there, there are actually lots of different machine learning schemes. And I must say that I'm really not an expert on machine learning. I have spent like, I don't know, like 40 hours to do these demos, and that's about it. But it's important to understand that uh, usually when we talk about supervised learning, we mean that we have a data set that is labeled. So for example, if you have uh, loads of images about hot dogs, you label them that this image is a hot dog, and then you have images of hamburgers, and you label them that this is a hamburger. From there, you can make the model and predict is if an image is a hamburger or hot dog. Then we have unsupervised learning. And in unsupervised learning, you don't generally have like labels for the data, but instead you sort of like uh, the neural network tries to find sort of things out of from, from, your, from your data. And then we have semi-supervised learning, which is like a mixture between these things. And what I have been doing is probably something like semi-supervised learning. Then we have also reinforcement learning. And the re reinforcement learning is actually the interesting part of the machine learning because uh, in reinforcement learning you sort of define function that tells your uh, bots that is it doing any good or something like that. So it resembles really, uh, really likely to how humans actually work. But like supervised learning and unsupervised learning, it doesn't like resemble actually brains like at all. So, if you want to do something like this, I mean, it takes a lot of Googling, right? So, I just wanted to share my ideas, how I have made these demos, and probably hope, hopefully uh, get you interested in these things. So, where to start? Okay. Now, this is like basic setup for playing games with visual input, purely. So, of course, you need screen capture, because you need to capture that screen that is happening just right now. And you have to take lots of screen captures um, from over and over. 
And of course, then, then you need a keyboard capture. So when you, when you collect your training data, you need to get the visual state of the game and current keyboard state. And when you have the data, you have to train the model, the neural network, if you wish. Uh, some, are of, some people call it fitting the model or something like that. But it, it means that it sort of uh, weights the neurons around there or something like that. I don't know actually anything about that, but anyway. And then when you have the model, you can use it again with the same screen capture to send input to game again back. So just send the image there and you get a prediction that what, what, uh, what the player should do. And then you're done. You have an autonomous playing robot or bot whatever you want to call it. So, we need shopping list. Of course, we need a simple game. Then we need TensorFlow or similar. There are lots of like neural networks tooling uh, are out there in the wild, but I have been using TensorFlow. And then you need a neural network definition suitable for image recognition problem. So the neural networks don't work like that, that you just take a neural network and throw it there and then things just work. We come back to that later. And then you need some Python code uh, or pick your poison. Uh, Python is probably the most used language in these sort of things. And then you need something to do sort of image processing thing, CV2 or something. And optionally you need GPU. And then you need lots of time and good nerves. So, how does it look like when you collect the data? Uh, this is like a pseudocode thing displayed here. But the idea, rough idea, is that you sort of loop all the time, and then you capture the screen, get the current keyboard state, and then you just peg it together like you have an array uh, of tuples that the first one is the current screen, and the second one is the current keyboard state. And then for like, I don't know, every 100 frame, you just persist the thing. And, you know, then you just make it, uh, fire this up and play the game for like hours. Well, not like hours, but like long time anyway. And then you have training data. But note about capturing the screen, because it's important that you actually use the exact same mechanism for capturing the screen uh, when you collect the training data and when you actually run your model. Because if it's slightly different, it just doesn't work. So make sure that you have exactly the same capturing mechanism in both. both. And yeah, it's, it must be exactly the same size and process it with exactly the same image processing pipeline. And you need to make it simple. Drop colors, try to make it as simple as possible. Okay, then we have sort of raw training data, but it doesn't work straight with the raw data. It just doesn't work. So you have to do something called balancing the data. And uh, the common problem with neural networks is overfitting, which would mean in my games something like the player is, would go always just straight. And how you overcome the uh, overfitting is that you should select the same amount of each keyboard states to the actual training data, sort of balanced training data. And actually, uh, now when you think, if you have a game that takes an input like uh, left arrow, right arrow, and up arrow, uh, you have three states, but actually, if you're not pressing anything, it's another state. So you would have sort of mapped the data in a way that you have uh, lefts when going left, just left, and when going just right, and when going just up, and when doing nothing. This example expects that you don't press the keys at the same time. If you do press keys at the same time, you need to make it as an uh, additional state to that sort of neural network output. 
So then you just take the minimum amount of those and select from there. And remember to shuffle the data because you want random distribution from your training data. Now, balancing the data, it's like the art of deep learning, actually. And this can be, I, I mean, I mean, it's, it's really complicated thing if you really start to think, but this will get you started. Okay, then you have bal balanced training data. Then you need to train the neural network or fit the data to neural network, whatever you want to call it. So you just basically load in the uh, balanced data. Then you load the model in. And then you say that, okay, I have this amount of data. So, so let's say 300 frames of that is something called validation set. And the rest is actual training data. Then you sort of select X and Y. So X is the image, and Y is the output. And then you just call some weird TensorFlow magic, and it will take time, because that's the part when it actually computes the, all the graphs and stuff like that. And when it's done, you just save it. Now, this is a bit simplified version of what I've been using, because you actually need to sort of reshape the image data and stuff like that. But you get the idea. And you should probably select something of 5 to 20% of the training data to be the validation set. Validation set is something like that it, the TensorFlow uses to sort of test out if the expected output is this for this. Sort of, you see. Uh, yeah. So there's neural network definition then. I'm really glad that you asked. And I would like to speak about something completely different. But um, because, uh, I mean, I, I really don't know these things. So I have been using this. It's something called AlexNet. I have no idea how it actually works, what it actually does. But it works, kind of works. And to my understanding, if you do sort of deep learning stuff, you generally don't like invent your own neural network definitions, but instead you browse through like scientific papers and see if the AlexNet is suitable for our problem. But I mean, this is something that if you want to do something like this, uh, you should go probably with AlexNet and just keep it as a black box because this is quite complicated thing as you probably probably know but it works so then you have model and of course you want to play your game run this beast and it's sort of like the uh, collecting the training data but sort of inverted in a way that you capture the screen and then you ask for a prediction for the model and predictions are in the shape of like arrays that are probabilities of those actions that you actually mapped to the output in the uh, balancing the data stage. And then you just press keys according to it. So in our ex simple example, there is like uh, the first one is the probability of going to, uh, pushing their left arrow. Second one is the probability of pushing the forward arrow, and third is the right arrow, and fourth is nothing. And you can, of course, you can get out something like uh, zero, dot two, dot one, dot zero, dot zero, one, and it kind of means that the neural network doesn't actually know what to do, and you just have to sort of try out different things that what you should do in those situations or something like that. And more about image processing, because we talk about computer vision. So don't try to do it with like 600 times 600 pixel images. Uh, you will only get super huge neural network, and it probably won't work. But instead, you have to scale the images down to something like 60x60. And the amazing thing is that it should be actually enough for your neural network to work things out, because it can sort of 
uh, should find the features from the data. And on top of that, you actually have to sort of think that what are the important visual features in your game to actually play the game. And you should try to make the images as simple as, as possible so that they retain those things. So probably you should like grayscale and make even binary images so something like there's only white or black pixels. And you should do cropping. You should use some masks around there and detect how lines and whatever. So what I have been using in this V-Drift example is that because the, this image, this is like way too big for the neural network. And the thing is that uh, it, it doesn't have like, like that opal bridge going around there. Like should it actually affect the like running of your engine? And it probably shouldn't, but the neural network doesn't have any way of sort of recognize that. So what I have been doing is the first I try to take sort of like minimal, minimal sort of grayscale thing. And uh, then I just crop everything out that is not the road. Like, because the road is like this of that image. And because there is no like, um, like um, uphills or downhills in this track, it kind of works. But uh, yeah. So, and after that, I convert to a binary. And then I got a great idea because there is like this um, things around the right side. So I just applied sort of blinkers. So I made everything white that is on the like the um, upper triangles of the image. And that's it. That's what I use for the V drift thing. Uh, on the endless flyer thing, uh, I didn't actually do anything, just but just just grayscaled it out, and it seemed to work. And my image processing kind of works, and this was like <laughs> because it worked way better in this demo than I expected. So well, but anyway, I must confess you, it kind of works. We just got really lucky today. So yeah. And this is actually something <laughs> related to that because I haven't had really time to work it out. I have been more interested in playing God of War 4, not doing neural network to play God of War 4. But anyway, so some things I have learned that are fascinating, what I think, is that because when you do it like this, this is like the most simple way of doing like visual input playing games, is that it's really counterintuitive that when you have training data, that is frame after frame after frame after frame, frame and then you just shuffle everything. And because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have any like context, it doesn't know what the neural network said in a last frame. And for some reason, it kind of works still. And this is like, like well, well, if you do that, you're going to see why it works like that, because the neural network doesn't have any data on the context. But why it works in games, it's like counterintuitive. And yeah, that, that V-Drift thing didn't actually work at all when I had just one neural network. And I was actually uh, on a Wednesday evening, no, no, Thursday evening, when I did the first iteration of this talk, it didn't work like at all. And then I just realized that like, like, what if I do it in a way that I have two neural networks? One is for steering and one is for velocity control. And to my surprise, it worked much better. And the quality and the balancing state of the data, I, I really feel that it's actually much more important than the amount of the data that you have. You really, really need to have really balanced data with like same exact amount, well not exact, but the roughly exact same amounts of the different outputs and 
in actually in different states of the game. So for example, in V-Drift, I should actually select the same amount of the events that are happening on a straight road and a, and a turning uh, situation. But I didn't do that. Uh, for those endless flighter, really simple stuff, you probably don't need GPU. The model uh, on the first video that I showed, uh, the training took something like 15 minutes. Um, and it's something that you can really actually wait. But for those we drift type of things, um, I think the training took like eight hours with GPU. And I didn't have actually lots of data. I have just like one gigabyte of the data. But Google has one really great service for you to use. It's something called Google Colab. It's not advertised that much, but it's basically hosted Jupyter Notebook environment in which you can actually use GPU for free. Uh, it's meant for educational purposes and like learning. And I think they have something like that, that you can only use 12 hours of GPU time in a day but it isn't actually documented anywhere though. So it might be that they just shut down your instance. But anyway, just really check that out if you're into these sort of things. So, okay, you don't wanna do We Drift or My Stupid Game. Um, you wanna of course select your own game. And I have some hints, maybe, something that I, I have been thinking. Um, you probably shouldn't do something like StarCraft bot at first. Well, you can try. But you should go more into Ast Asteroids or Arkanoid or stuff like that games. Um, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't make a StarCraft bot, but if you want to do sort of like working thing, you should start from really, really simple games. Uh, Tetris, probably not a good idea. Because if you think Tetris, there's like millions of states and you would need a heck a load of training data. You probably could do something like with the image recognition that it sort of tries to see what the upper limit is and then just discard everything else. It could work, but I would say that this, this would be actually really hard. But if you want to do reinforcement learning, it can be really interesting, actually. I don't know what happens, but just, you know, find it out. Doom, take some modifications, some suitable watts, like, you know, like gladiator type of watt where monsters spawn, and it's like there, there are not, not lots of like obstacles, but instead like open field or something like that would be fun. Uh, flipper. Uh, it would be trivial to make sort of just a pushing at the right, <coughs> right moment, but like playing and aiming, that's probably hard. Flight simulators. If you can get your AI to fly through sort of like virtual uh, gateway, if you want to call it or something like that, would be interesting. Um, AW has Deep Razor, which is like reinforcement learning infrastructure thingy that you um, try to optimize your Deep Razor uh, car uh, to go through the road. And you have seen videos of the actual machines, but they have sort of simulator for uh, training your models. And it's really the easy to use, actually. I haven't actually tried, but I heard. Uh, Udacity has made uh, something like self-driving car simulator thing which is especially meant for like testing out uh, sort of self-driving car simulator things. So it's just a simulator that you can sort of refresh and blah, 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 stuff like that. So some ideas where to go from here. Um, I wrote a blog post called My Own Summer Neural Network. I'm pretty proud of that name. And it sort of describes the endless flyer game, and it's available on GitHub. Um, I have to warn you, though, that it's not clean code, it's data science code. So the WeDrift thing is not available yet. 
but there's really, really, really good and funny, entertaining YouTube video series called Python Plays GTA V. v, GTA v. Um, it's something like 25 hours or something like that, but I guarantee it, it's super fun. You should watch it. So, go out there, experiment with these things, write a blog post about them, and I must say that it's, it's almost magical experience when you see your computer doing like something like this for the first time, even so you clearly can, can see that it's not like super intelligent or anyway, but anyway, the, the sort of programming model is so different because you don't say like branches of ifs and stuff like that, but instead you have just data, you pour it in, and then it works. Magic. So, and because deep learning affects our lives already, dramatically, it will eventually affect you as a professional. So, my um, tip for you is try to do something with deep learning because of this. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, questions for Juho. Oh my uh, god. There's Jarko somewhere with a microphone, so if you have questions, just raise your hand. I actually can't see if you have your hands raised, but... Well, I, I have a question. Why Python? Why Python? Well, <laughs> TensorFlow is Python, so... I think they have like no JS type of thing out in the wild as well, but uh, I mean the Python is it's like the de facto standard of those things, probably R as well. But uh, how did you try to add this reinforcement learning to to the car simulator? How no. hard it is? No. Um, I decided from really early that I will concentrate purely on like the situations where I know all the data because reinforcement learning, to my understanding, it's completely different field. It doesn't work like that at all. So I probably try to do reinforcement learning at some time. And I really think the AWS DeepRacer is the way to go there because they have sort of like the infra infrastructure ready and yeah. Anything else? Oh, cool. Thank you. Maybe a round of applause still.